Welcome to episode 6. We're going to continue exactly where we left off from in last episode, with some more types of blocks. This episode will be all about mesh blocks. But before we continue, I want to first have a chat about the channel, and I have a favour to ask, which will help us grow this community. We currently have just over 500 members on our Discord, but we really need to get to 1,000, as once we hit that milestone, we'll be listed for server discovery. So, if you haven't already, or have been on the edge of deciding whether to join, now is your chance to help out PlanetSmith. It's the best place to ask me questions directly to, or post your ideas. The first 1,000 members are going to get a special pioneer role, so if this game is popular in the future, you can prove you were there at the beginning. Link is in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe and add PlanetSmith to your Steam wishlist. Okay, now back to the mesh blocks. What are they? I'm calling any block that has a custom model a mesh block. For example, this barrel. How do I add that to the game? Of course, the classic way you would do this would be to add an object into the world in the correct position every time a barrel is placed by the player and remove the object when the block is broken. This would work, but it has one major drawback. As I talked about in episode one, if we let every barrel be its own object, we create one draw call for every barrel placed. This is fine for a few barrels, but what if the player decides to place 1,000 barrels? Or fill a whole chunk with barrels? At that point, the frame rate would plummet and the game would turn into a slideshow. How can we prevent this? Well, like with regular blocks, we could instead add the barrels mesh to the chunk mesh. That way, we won't increase jaw calls at all, and it will have no effect on frame rate. This sounds perfect. How do we do that? It may seem trivial at a glance, but the fact that the world is a globe and that we're using jobs brings about some challenges that we need to overcome. Also, we want this to be an easy process that works with existing solutions. An artist should be able to create a model, texture it and add it to the game, and it should just work just like it would with any other game. To understand why this is complex, I first need to show you how a normal hexagonal block is made, as that is a hard-coded block where functions are used to work out the positions of each vertex. Before we look at this code, I'm quickly going to go over how mesh data works. I'm sure some of you already know this, but it's important to understand before I continue. Mesh data contains a list of vertices and a list of triangles. Vertices are points in 3D space, and the list of triangles tells the graphics card how to connect those vertices together into a model. Mesh data may also contain a list of UV coordinates, one coordinate for each vertex, which relates to the position a vertex is on a texture. This can then be used to sample that texture, and voila, you have a textured model. Mesh data can contain a lot of other information too, but that's not important for now. For example, what does the mesh data look like for a simple square? Well, the vertex list would look like this. Now the position of each vertex in the vertex list is important, as it's this index we use in the triangle list. To make a square, we need two triangles. We would need triangle 0, 1, 2, and triangle 0, 2, 3. So the triangle list would be 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 3. The triangle list is always three times the number of triangles long, as we need three indices for each triangle. Finally, the UV list would look something like this, with one UV index for each vertex. 
Now everyone is up to speed with how meshes work, let's look how a standard hexagonal block in PlanetSmith is made. Adding a standard block is broken down into two parts, adding the hexagons and adding the six rectangular faces on the side of a block. There are some more complex if statements here, but they're all to do with culling and texture rotation, so we can ignore that for now. If we look at the insert cap into buffer function, this is the part which is responsible for adding the hexagon to the top and the bottom of our block. It looks a little confusing, so let me break down what's actually happening. Chunk Z is the Z position of the chunk. Chunk index refers to the index of the voxel inside the chunk. It ignores the Z position as it only cares about the X and Y coordinates. Vertex index is used for creating triangles with the correct indices by offsetting to the correct index. Here is a for loop that steps through all six corners of the hexagon. We can ignore the rotated vertex line for now as that is for rotating textures and we're not interested in that today. But here, this index is super important. Ignore the first part, that is to do with some quirks of our world, but this bit here, chunk index times six plus i. This is the index of the corner in our corner array. The corner array contains the vectors from the world's origin to each corner of our hexagon for every hexagon in the chunk. So we are getting a unit vector from the world's origin to the corner we are trying to draw. We are then multiplying the vector to get its real world position. This part gets the Z position in blocks. Position is the height of a block, one for a full block, 0.5 for a slab. And radius is the radius of the world. At the end, I subtract off the world position. This is the position of the chunk as we want the coordinates to be local to our chunk. I then add the UVs for the shader and the vertex color buffer is used for tinting colored blocks. Finally, I create triangles with the new vertices. Okay, did I lose you? If you've followed along, well done. This was quite technical, but if you didn't, don't worry. All this really means is that instead of defining each vertex of our block as an absolute position, we're instead describing it as a vector from the center of the world that we then multiply to get the correct position. This lets the game account for the expansion of blocks as we get further away from the center of the planet, keeping everything aligned. This means we somehow need to convert our model's absolute vertex positions into this vector format. So the models get rotated and warped correctly with the planet's blocks. To make matters even worse, there is also a second really big problem. Because I'm using jobs, we have a few limitations. One of the big limitations with jobs is that you can't use reference types. In Unity, a mesh is a class, and a class is a reference type. That means that we can't access a mesh inside a job. So, we must somehow store the data for a mesh, its vertex positions, UV coordinates, and triangles as their own separate lists. But it gets even worse. You can't have a list of lists with jobs as a gang that's a reference type. This means that if we want different meshes in the game, not just a barrel, then all the vertex, triangles, and UV lists must be combined together into three massive lists. We have our requirements now. We made to make some sort of mesh baker that will take the mesh data for every mesh we want in the game and convert it into three lists. One for all the vertices, one for all the triangles, and one for all the UVs. We then need a way to index these lists so we can retrieve our models at runtime. Then we need to convert the positions to our vector-based format. Easy! 
So here is what we've ended up with. You add your meshes and your textures. You get a nice little preview. Then, when we bake the block data, this function bakes all the mesh data into lists and creates a list sorting those index positions so we can retrieve the data later. Then, when we want to insert our mesh into the chunk, we convert the vertex positions into our vector format. The maths here might be a little confusing, but what I'm doing is first rotating the vertices for the player placing rotation, then converting all the positions into cubic coordinates, then finally multiplying those cubic coordinates with voxel corners to get the vertex position. Like with normal blocks, the vector position is multiplied out to get the real world position and the vertex can then be inserted into our chunk along with the UV coordinates and the triangles. Phew! We are done. And after all that hard work, this is the end result. I've also added this chest and these um, flowers and pots, which are just some extra variety for now. Just to prove that we can have multiple different meshes all saving. Uh, you'll see that the barrels, they are aligning perfectly with the hexagon. There's no air gaps between them because they're designed to go right to the edge. Switching to the mesh view, you can see that it's all now inside the same chunk. So this is going to mean that we're going to get great frames per second all the time now. A popular question in some of the other videos have been about the pentagon, so here is one. And you can see this is where there is the most distortion of hexagons, really close to that pentagon. But it also distorts the barrels correctly too, so if we look at them they're still all touching perfectly. So this means they are distorting just as we would expect by using that vector technique. And they're all lining up perfectly. Even though we're close to the pentagon where the distortion is the worst, you can see that it's still not terrible. Well, what about frame rate? Has this really fixed the issue? I have placed barrels as far as you can see, and it's still easily getting over 100 frames per second in the editor. Of course, standard blocks would render faster, but the difference now is marginal. I can break blocks, and place blocks seamlessly, proving this technique is super scalable. Although this was a tricky feature to get right, it is super powerful and will allow us to make lots of uniquely shaped blocks. It also allows for some more complex blocks like fences, which is what I want to talk about next, but I'll save that for the next episode. I would like to thank our YouTube members. I really appreciate your support. As I said at the start, remember to add Planetsmith to your Steam wishlist. And come join our Discord to help us reach 1000 members. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.